All right, so yes, Aki asked us to put together a few slides to talk about what's different for EUV masks. I want to acknowledge my co-author, who is a huge help in, in putting the material together, Jed Rankin, who works with me in the, in the Global Foundries mask shop in Burlington, Vermont. So figure we should start with what are the benefits of EUV and looking at it from a Global Foundries perspective with a focus on seven nanometer. So there's multiple fab benefits that we've seen uh, in the form of the lithographic performance, which results in improved device performance, showing below some nice slides presented by uh, Samsung and VLSI comparing the multi-patterning result on wafer versus the EUV single exposure. And also the other key benefit being the wafer cycle time in the fab which enables faster development, faster prototyping, and faster production. So if we look at the impact of that cycle time, for development at 7 nanometer, you can get up to a 60-day reduction in development. And then in production, 31-day reduction um, uh, in the decreased uh, wafer cycle time in the fab. And that's just looking conservatively at this chart. If you look at an optical-only solution, normalized uh, total mass count, you can see the, the green is the 193 number of 193 layer mass. Reduce that by 20% um, <clears throat> by moving uh, layers to EUV, and you end up with a significant uh, cycle time reduction. And then that benefit increases further when you move to 5 nanometer node because you need that many more optical mass, 20% more 193 levels for an optical only solution at 5. So huge benefits. So let's compare on the physical mask the differences between optical and EUV. Uh, look, taking a look at contact and vias versus also cuts and metals. So as far as number of mass uh, per layer, for seven nanometer optical contacts and vias, you're looking at two to four layers. We'll show more detail on that in a minute. One layer for EUV at seven, one layer for EUV when you move to five. Um, optical, we're doing at NTD, so it's a bright field, correct positive mask. EUV, you switch back to dark field, correct negative mask. The primary feature size uh, for optical is 250. Uh, primary feature size uh, at 7 for EUV on the contact level is 70. 5 nanometer, you move to 55 nanometer. SRAFs are needed for the optical solution on the order of 50 to 60 nanometer in size. They're opaque uh, pillars. Uh, for 7, we do not see the need to have SRAFs at Global Foundries on the contact hole mass at 7. You do need to put them in place, and they're about 30 nanometers uh, for the uh, 5 nanometer solution for contacts and vias. <coughs> Moving on to the cuts and metals, we currently at seven see the need for three uh, optical mass to do, uh, per layer. Um, that drops to one, one, optical ma uh, one EUV mask at seven. When you move to five nanometer EUV, you're looking at one to two EUV masks. And then obviously the number of optical mass required for a five nanometer solution is, is, is uh, definitely more than three. The tone, mass tones for optical, it's a combination of bright field, correct positive, and dark field for the cuts. Um, uh, actually, the, uh, the uh, metal layer, it's a mix of cuts and uh, bright field and dark field. EUV, you're at dark field, and you could be in, in a mixture of dark field and bright field uh, when you move to 5 nanometer. Minimum feature size on the mask for metals, 200 nanometers, 50 nanometers for metals on a 7 nanometer uh, EUV solution, and then moving to 45 nanometer for a, a 5 nanometer EUV solution. SRAFs, dual tone SRAFs, 54 opaque, 60 clear, typical sizes at mask. No requirement for SRAFs for 7 nanometer solution for metals. And then moving to 24 clear, 30 nanometer opaque um, for a 5 nanometer EUV solution. And then if you look uh, at the pictures on the, on the right, um, we, take, we time travel back as far as the OPC level of aggressiveness, back to um, 32, 20, 28 nanometer node type of complexity for OPC. Um, so we're looking at, we're allowed to have bi-directional metals, the pattern density is relaxed. There's very few, no SRAFs at seven nanometer. Um, very, very, much more simplified OPC. Still model-based. No need for ILT at seven, but feel free to use it. We, we don't see the need. 
And then as far as requirements uh, for EUV, we see them leading to the need for the multi-beam mass grader. It's a benefit for seven. It needs, uh, we see it as a, an absolute necessity for five. So from a resolution standpoint, as we mentioned previously, we're looking at about a 40 nanometer minimum feature size at seven, moving to 24. Uh, line edge roughness of four at mass going to two for the five nanometer requirement. All of this and local CDU, two and a half nanometers uh, for the mask at seven, moving to one and a half for the five nanometer requirement. Uh, image placement also going from two and a half at seven to one and a half for five nanometer requirement. Um, <clears throat> this, these requirements all point towards the need for low sensitivity resists. Uh, which will drive long write times for obviously for a single beam mask writer. And then on the design side, ILT, no need for that until you get into the five nanometer regime. Uh, same with the SRAFs. So all of these requirements are pointing towards the need at five nanometer for the multi beam uh, mask writer. Definitely a benefit at seven, but not an absolute necessity is our, is our view on this. So the originally the uh, MBMW tools were developed with the expectation for the high shot count and data density. Um, at seven, that's not as big of an issue as it, as it is at five. The main motivation is the low sensitivity resist at seven. And then uh, obviously at seven, the EUV we, uh, allows the relaxation of the shot and vertex density. So looking a little more at uh, differences in the mass, how they physically appear, what kind of pattern densities they have. Uh, on the left, looking at CA level, back to a dark field mask with uh, the features are holes on the mask, only about a 4.9% open area. The same test site on the right, built optically for CA, you're looking at four masks. Uh, NTD on wafer, so they're now bright field. Uh, mass. They have a different, uh, very different pattern density because of the need for all of these SRAFs to, to, uh, to meet the resolution requirements optically. So this is why you see large differences in the actual pattern density because of the need for SRAFs and lots of fill versus the much more simple EUV mass design. M1, the left is the EUV M1, about a 49% open area, uh, dark field. If we look at an M1 for seven, uh, it is about a 45% open area for the mandrel layer. It's currently being done NTD um, with, uh, with negative resist. And then, however, you're required to have two additional cut masks uh, to make the feature sizes. And you can see um, the SRAFs needed for the, the metal uh, mandrel layer and then um, some OPC also required on the, uh, the cut mask itself uh, compared to the much more simple EUV mask design at seven. These are all again the same uh, seven nanometer test site. So for specific EUV mass challenges, just a list of those that many of us are aware of, um, the blanks obviously, uh, the defects uh, because it is a mirror, and the, we have new materials being introduced in the form of the tantalum and the ruthenium, which are uh, new for dry etch and for repair systems for mass makers. We've got the black border and the need for the out-of-band suppression. Uh, that's very, that's unique for the EUV. In addition to a, a huge focus on the backside cleanliness of the EUV reticles, uh, very important, um, not really a, 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 a big issue for optical masks. And then much uh, unique flatness and uh, thickness requirements, much tighter uh, on the EUV mask itself compared to optical. Initially, uh, HVM uh, will, will start without a pellicle if it's not ready. Uh, we're not waiting for a pellicle solution. Um, and then uh, moving on after seven nanometer, implementing new thinner absorbers, which will be a challenge from a repair integration and, and durability standpoint. So. On the equipment side, we need to we have to use the MBMW for the uh, for the CD placement and the LER, and also uh, topic of the panel discussion at the conference is the use of the non-actinic uh, non-actinic uh, 
uh, pattern inspection after the mask is built using either a deep UV or e-beam based SEM type uh, inspection system. Uh, you know, there are very few AIMS tools out there with a very, very long lead time, so uh, repair uh, verification will be a challenge. A lot of work in the wafer fabs for that. In addition, looking forward beyond five nanometer, we've got the unique anamorphic scaling coming. Uh, but we do, we do expect that the, the impact of that will be uh, minimal. Uh, and then the equipment, one of the challenges is extending the EUV uh, unique equipment from seven to being able to continue to use it at five and beyond. Uh, that we do not have to keep purchasing unique, additional EUV unique equipment after the seven nanometer node that we can extend what we have. So, I well, wanted to talk a little bit about some specific mass data challenges for EUV. So uh, one of the unique things is the hierarchy with EUV uh, is lost. Everything is, uh, tends towards uh, flattening of the data, uh, job decking. Um, you can still do it, but you'll see um, none of the chips I I are the same, even if they start out as two chips identical being placed on the mask. So, and this is due to the need for flare corrections. Uh, uh, as you go across the slit, you've got uh, differences uh, in the radial XY performance that drive position de dependent uh, corrections. Um, you can see here differences as you go across the slit in the pattern shift in the X and the Y. This all has to be accounted for um, uh, in up upstream in the uh, OPC data prep. In addition, EUV drives the use, uh, much higher use of the dose modulating, uh, MPC with dose modulation to make these very small features to have very good pattern fidelity on the mask. In addition, we've got the unique challenge of the blank de uh, defectivity management and the need for pattern shift to avoid the blank defects. Definitely unique for EUV. That drives some data uh, challenges. And then in addition, you, we have some unique e-beam corrections that are needed um, <clears throat> due to having this, this multi-layer uh, film stack. And in many cases, you have to go from a, one, a single Gaussian to a multi-Gaussian type uh, proximity effect correction. That is unique for EUV compared to optical. So going forward, the data density is going to increase um, <clears throat> by uh, implementing the, uh, the SRAFs and the ILT um, and all of these other corrections uh, that are required for EUV. Um, we're going to be focused on fracture challenges, getting things ready for multi-beam uh, writers or any other advanced writers out there. Uh, what we do see is a, a need for increased off-board correction, meaning not in the writer itself, but uh, to take into account uh, for, for MPC, CD, and image placement e-beam corrections. And then over time, migrating towards the ILT and curvilinear designs uh, as EUV matures. And as Jed's comment, because we can, not because we need it. <laughs> so <laughs> specifically, uh, this, uh, this chart's an interesting one comparing the impact of all this on the mass data prep flow. So if we have incoming GDS uh, chips here, uh, for the standard optical flow, um, they go through OPC, MPC, and then get assembled onto the job deck. And in this case, notice chip A is placed four times identically uh, uh, onto, the, onto the mask. Because of all of these unique corrections needed for flare, and, uh, as you go across the slit um, <clears throat> and XY positional de dependence, you have to actually take these four chips and do a virtual assembly layout, if you will, of the mask up front that allows you to then define the, the flare correction map, the slit correction map, those all get rolled into the, the OPC and the subsequent MPC. And uh, then after it's all assembled, you can see these four identical chips uh, placed on the mask for optical are no longer identical. You have four unique corrections and four unique fractures. So that's what we mean about uh, um, <clears throat> lack of hierarchy and uh, the job decking of you have more chips that have to go through mass data prep because essentially uh, depending on its place in the field it's a unique fracture. So as I mentioned and this is all due to the EUV flare issue, the radial exposure slit and the uh, effect of the non um, <coughs> 
the, the six degree angle of incidence uh, on the mask. So we have the additional MDP complexity, uh, the flare map positional awareness, and uh, requiring the concurrent data. So hierarchy, a lot of it is lost, no repeated dyes, and then we have to deal with anamorphic going forward. So just a short summary, EUV is real, the benefits are real, no, no, no doubt about it, the, in the form of the image quality, the cycle time, and we have real challenges, uh, namely the scanner throughput, mass defects, edge placement error, and then stochastics in the E-beam resist on wafer. The challenge I, that I mentioned uh, in the data infrastructure um, exist, but they're not showstoppers. Uh, we, we believe the solutions are out there. These kinds of challenges will not limit the, the success of, e, of EUV. They are unique.